York, and she made a wonderful film that we showed yesterday here at the Great Bell Houseware. And she's working actually on the second film on the fifth grade instrument, and I hope we'll get a chance to see it soon. And she's a, a bit of the guardian of the fifth screen uh, in, the, in Canada. The fifth screen that was actually uh, created by the original creator, Alexei Vizarka. And we also have with us uh, Sophie Le Tezou and Jean Betsy Ganero of the Centre National de, de la Cinématographie et de l'Image Animée, and in short, is the French Agency for Cinema. And they're specifically uh, working with a department that restore and preserve a classic film, really taking care of the French heritage of cinema, a very important uh, job that doesn't exist in many countries. Uh, we all know as Americans that it doesn't necessarily exist, uh, at least not in this form. And they've been uh, the leading force in France in the past Ten years or so to restore the last pink print machine that these inventors created in the, I believe in the 70s, but they'll tell us more about it. And they trained a new generation of filmmakers in France to learn how to make films uh, on the pink screen instrument with the help of Michel, who also flew over in France and gave her expertise and her knowledge uh, with all the, these French filmmakers. So we are going to let you uh, tell us about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you all for coming. Do you hear me? It's okay. Yeah. Um, after a short biographical reminders, uh, we'll talk about the invention of the pin screen. So jean we will talk about the functioning and the principle. And then Michel will talk about the Canadian legacy. And after that, we all uh, talk about uh, the rebirth of the pin screen in France. So um, for some biographical reminders, uh, they are useful to understand the work of Alexia and, uh, Alexia and Parker and uh, their creative process. So uh, Alexeyev was born in Russia in 1901 uh, and his childhood uh, was marked by a chaotic journey through uh, Russia. And um, it was uh, for him uh, a very important period. Uh, uh, that um, influenced his artistic wor uh, work. He was uh, entirely uh, influenced by the reminiscences of, of his childhood in Russia. Uh, for those uh, of, us, of you uh, that were here yesterday for the screening, Alex uh, Rockwell, his grandson, explained to us that uh, he, it was very important this uh, past in Russia this feeling of statelessness uh, in his work. So uh, in all Alexeyev and Parker's work, you can have Russian uh, reminiscence, like illustration of books uh, and uh, uh, illustration of uh, Russian musician Musovsky. Um, the revolution in Russia forced him to, uh, to flee uh, and he joined Paris in 1921 where he worked at uh, the other settings uh, in the artistic avant-garde. And he met Alexandra Grileski, uh, his first wife, and also the mother of uh, his own daughter, Svetlana. He left uh, his job at the theater at, 40, at uh, 24, and learned engraving by himself with the help of, of his wife. And during the five next years, he illustrated uh, 20 books, Russian classical literature, and also contemporary authors like Supo or Apollinaire. And the quality of his work and this, his uh, inventiveness uh, gave him a solid reputation as an engraver. Uh, it was at this time that the young American Claire Parker appears in his life. Uh, she was born in 1906 in Brookline, near Boston in the US. And she was a free spirit, and uh, from a wealthy family, and also a brilliant scholar, uh, studying at the MIT, and also art in Vienna. And she wanted to uh, have lessons, and graphics lessons uh, with Alexeyev. Uh, she became quick, quickly his mistress. And when the Second War broke out, uh, they all fled Alexeyev, Parker, Krinevsky, and Svetlana to the US. And uh, they lived here in New York for um, a few years before coming back to Paris uh, in 1947. Um, Yesterday, 
we try to find the place where they used to be uh, in the Washington Square, but it seems that the building disappeared. <laughs> Um, so uh, Claire was very, very important in that creative process because uh, she was the engineer and she totally, totally, totally collaborated to uh, the, the universe and the, the, the work of Alex Eliot. Uh, this is just a short biographical reminder because we don't have time enough. But we can, we can find more in the book that was edited uh, on, the, on the left. Uh, that was edited uh, for the exhibition that we made in 2015 in Annecy uh, with a musician uh, that was Alex Eliot Parker Shadow Tamers. So here you can also see some pictures of the exhibition. Uh, exhibitions that uh, we are able to make available, of course. Everywhere. So, everywhere even in the United States, where we are looking for some place uh, to, to present it, because uh, as, you, as Sophie told you, that uh, Alex and Parker have a strong connection with uh, North America, especially with New York and Brooklyn and Montreal. So, um, now, uh, we, so now um, we spoke about Alex and Pierre Parker, about Geographical art, but uh, all, all in screen's work. Um, it's a very interesting uh, idea, uh, invention. In fact, uh, it, it's just the way uh, how to uh, make animated and writing things. And uh, that uh, we've, uh, we've done that in the uh, beginning of the 30s with uh, Alexeyev and his first wife. Uh, Alexandra Grinevsky, uh, Alexeyev imagined, uh, in fact, uh, a kind of a grid of things uh, on, a, on a white surface. And uh, he decided to try it first with a, in an invention uh, with a prototype called uh, Bebe, Baby Nicola, Bebe Nicola. And it was, in fact, um, the um, daughter's teddy. Uh, so it was a beer with a, with a hat. And uh, so he, he, they bought a, a canvas and they put some pins, hundreds uh, pins in this canvas and uh, to try to, to make a, a, an image. And in fact it works very well. So they decided a few times after uh, to make uh, another uh, big screen, bigger, f to make a film. So. Here, this is a, just a side of the videos with a quick presentation of uh, Alexei Klaparka and also the, um, the principle of um, uh, the pink screen. It's not the first pin screen, it's, a, it's a one made here in America. But uh, you can see Alex Eliev working on it. Usually Alex Eliev uh, used to work on, on the positive side and Claire Parker pushed back the pin screen, the pins on the negative side. And uh, as you see, it's a grid. Now, the first pin screen was a, was a metal grid and uh, here, uh, the, the pins, you know, in a close-up uh, view. And in fact, the shadows, you know, hide the, the white surface. And uh, when you have thousand and thousand pins like this, in fact, you have black, total black, or you can have many shades of gray until the white surface, if you push everything on the back. So the first pin screen made was uh, with uh, 500,000 pins and it was uh, about 1.30, 1 meters and 30 centimeters 
and uh, large and uh, 90 centimeters of high. This one was a little bit um, the same size, but with uh, very, very small pins. So you have uh, over 1 million pins on this wow. pin screen. You know, and it was their main pin screens because they made many, many films about it. Um, So here is Alexeyev in front of the first pin screen during uh, the shooting of uh, a night of all mountains that some people here uh, seen yesterday. It's some image during the, sh the shooting that you can hear. It's not so, you can hear around the pin screen, you know, the windows of the, the workshop, etc., etc. So it's, this is a real image during the, the shooting. And, um, this first pin screen had been used only once for this film, and uh, after, the, in a, a bit later, in uh, 1937, uh, you can see it here in uh, another exhibition what we did done in France, and uh, this is the last image done on it. This is used now for music, music um, for exhibition, you know, museum. Uh, Opposed because it doesn't work anymore, of course. And in uh, 1937, they've done another, they tried to make another pin screen with another grid, um, but it doesn't work properly. And uh, not, it wasn't good enough to make films, to make animated and graphic films. So, uh, but they, they wanted by, uh, to, to make this for um, uh, commercial purpose and try to sell it. Even here in America, because they, they were in touch with someone to, to do it and um, try to, to, to make it available, available for people, but the deal doesn't work. So, and uh, they just was able to, to make one or single image and not animating on railings. Uh, and uh, this is one we, we bought to the family recently, a few years ago. And uh, this, this, so this is the same. Uh, Pin screen, of course. So on the left, you have uh, an image from Alexei von Gerbacher, and on the right, this is an image done by Michelle uh, a few years ago during uh, for an exhibition that uh, she's done uh, at the uh, Canadian Cultural Center in Paris and also in uh, Montreal. So this is the pin screen that you discovered on the video. So it's a huge stuff, you know. It's uh, Quite big, it's uh, almost two meters high uh, for the structure, you know, and uh, all the pins, all the pins are over one million, you know, and with again as the first one uh, a picture done, and uh, that we we can't use it, so it's a, it's a just a freeze on the pin screen, and uh, here. Uh, it was so, we, we found all the address, you know, all the locations where uh, Alexei Fedra Parker used to live in, in America. And uh, this one, it was uh, in fact a house, a private house, um, that they, they rent uh, for, for, to put the, the big screens, a huge big screen, and make the, the first film in America for uh, the National Film Board. That uh, another film that you've seen uh, yesterday, during the screening, uh, called En Passant, uh, is uh, an illustration of, uh, of music, uh, popular uh, singing, uh, Canadian singing. Another film done on, the, on this huge big screen, this is The Nose, done in uh, 20 years uh, after the En Passant, so from Nicolas Gogol. And you can see here all the tools that they used to to use here, you know, very strange tools. Uh, sometimes they are very, 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 very strange. So I don't know if you believe in something, but uh, when you see the tools with uh, some uh, some pins or some stuff, uh, I'm sure you know so it's like uh, Inquisition tools. You know, we can we can make you believe in something with that kind of tools. You know, definitely. Yeah, a quick video. Oh, that's good. Of what you're doing. So, and then seen the document where it's a clap on camera, and uh, Alexei is walking on the nose. 
you know. So it was uh, they just make an image. Sometimes it change a part of this image, you know. So this is a hand, and when next day they feel satisfied by the, the new image, they take a picture, and then they go on and they go on and go on. So it took months to do it. And this video has been, uh, this film has been made in the workshop in Paris. They start to rent it in uh, the 30s, and in fact, uh, they spent 50 years together in this workshop. So another film uh, made uh, in the beginning of the 70s. All the pictures at an exhibition um, screen also yesterday. It was uh, quite, um, Quite nice film, quite um, ambitious, you know, uh, because uh, it had been done with two green screens, the big one and the small one. The small one, in fact, has been sold right after this film to the National Film Board, and they mixed all the, the, the both pictures of the both green screen on the on the same uh, same film. So it's a very nice one, and. You can see here, so uh, the couple in their workshop, quite messy, you know, uh, in Paris. Yes. So we can choose to swap some laptops for the Michel. Uh, to you about, it's called Le Neck, it's the Nouvelle Écran de Tank. Uh, it has been purchased uh, by the Film Board, the National Film Board of Canada in, uh, in 72, or well, <laughs> we're fighting over the 72 or 73. Um, we have two persons to thank especially about uh, the technique of um, Alexeyev for passing over. It's Norman McLaren and Jacques Drouin. Norman McLaren is a very famous filmmaker, Scottish filmmaker, who immigrated in Canada in uh, uh, early time uh, in his life, and uh, has spent all his life uh, at the National Film Board working uh, and doing film. He's very famous uh, uh, as a filmmaker because he was also an inventor of many techniques. And um, Norman McLaren was uh, a good friend of uh, uh, Alexeyev, and we have him to thank that the, the, um, uh, the pin screen came to Montreal. I'm going to uh, show you more about that. The other person who is very important is Jacques Drouin, who took over the, um, uh, the, the technique of the pin screen. And uh, it has been now 46 years uh, that uh, Canadian Film Board has this uh, pin screen. And after the death of Claire Parker and uh, Alexeyev, Jacques Drouin was the only person in the world that knew how this uh, technique uh, works. So it's very important because it could have been lost. Because an instrument uh, has to have the uh, artisan, the, uh, the, the artist and the craftsman. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can do a lot wrong. And uh, Jean-Baptiste was talking about the mysterious tools. Uh, I think we are very few people, if there are very few people on this planet who can go in this workshop and know exactly what is this and that for. And very often, I think, because I'm looking for tools all the time, and I, if I forget my purse somewhere, I get uh, stolen, the person would look in my purse and think I'm crazy. <laughs> I go with such strange things. So let me start now. Um, this, okay. So this is the neck. So what is so special about the neck? Uh, it's always the same principle with the pins, but they spent a whole life looking for a way to have the pin holding, and that's a lifetime achievement to to, to have those pins uh, get together. So it's a metal frame. Uh, and in this uh, uh, metal frame you have tubes, here you have the tubes before they were cut and uh, uh, they cut it into small um, segments 
In each tube there is a pin, and the pin is five millimeter longer than the tube. Wow. So, and it's put all together, 240,000 pins that are, and tubes that are put together uh, into this metal frame. So when I push from the front to the back, I, you see the white tube, and when I push from the back to the front, then you see uh, the pin. The, but there is a light, and the light is giving, uh, the, the spot is giving light from the side, so that each pin casts a shadow. And that's the m main principle of the pin screen. It's a work with light and shadow. The camera is just right in front of the pin screen, but the camera doesn't see the pin. What the camera sees is the shadow of the pin. So basically, the drawing you're doing is made out of shadow and just exists because of the light. If I was to put the light in the front, the drawing disappears because there's no uh, shadow anymore. So uh, Alexei and Evan Parker were working on both sides uh, of the pin screen, uh, especially with the larger one, it was uh, necessary. But the one we have uh, at the film board is the one they made that was a smaller size, so you can work on your own. Uh, you don't uh, need a partner to, put, to pull back the, the pins from, uh, from the back. Um, this means that you have to be able to draw with both hands because to reach both surfaces, you have to be able to draw with right and left hand and from back and the front, so which is, uh, but I'm sure uh, it's, a, it's a, a tool for Ambidex, and I'm sure Alexei was Ambidex and Claire as well, and Jacques Dumont as well. <laughs> um, so Norman McLaren uh, was a good friend of uh, uh, the couple, and he worked like 10 years on this idea of having uh, Alexei and Claire Parker sell a pin screen to the film board. It took 10 years to pursue him, it took 10 years to pursue the film board to purchase one. And uh, as this happened, uh, it was at the time where uh, Alexei and Claire spent some time in uh, uh, Canada, uh, they were uh, working uh, together. And then um, uh, Alexei and Claire as they decided to uh, sell a pin screen, they made a demonstration to uh, filmmakers in, uh, in Montreal. Uh, and later on, another filmmaker, Jacques Drouin, uh, who knew uh, the pin screen, was to make a stage at the film board, and it was encountering with uh, Norman McLaren that made him um, start to work on the pin screen. He did the first film, Trois Exercices, which were exercises to, uh, uh, to, to, to um, understand the pin screen. He fears that when he dies, the screen will die and the technique will die with it. No, uh, we have someone, Jacques Drouin, who is carrying on, who is taken to it, in fact, by the fish to water. So Jacques did, uh, uh, asked the three, three exercises, he made a film called The Paysagiste, who was actually the first film uh, released on the pin screen at the lifetime of uh, Alexei Evan Parker. It was indeed very intimidating for him, but there was an ocean in between, so he could still feel a sort of liberty, uh, although, of course, it's always uh, uh, very exciting to work, and, and you know that the inventor is not very far. Um, and after the first film was released, there was also a, a feeling to be accepted uh, from Jacques with uh, Alexeyev, and they had good contact uh, together. Uh, Jacques also worked with Bratislav Poya, who is a very famous Czech filmmaker. He was working with Jerzy um, Trinka. Uh, he did a film with him, uh, including puppet and uh, pin screen animation, called L'Art des Anges. Uh, where he started to work with uh, color gel. Uh, he did uh, many other films, uh, but uh, the legacy of Jacques is uh, to have brought the pin screen all through that time, uh, not, know, not only knowing the technique, but also uh, improving it and, and trying to find many other ways. This uh, film, Empreinte, is uh, working a lot with the, uh, uh, the relief of the pin screen, which was something that was never revealed at the time of uh, Alexeyev, because he didn't want anyone to see too much that it's uh, pin. He was afraid to be, uh, his invention to be stolen. 
So those are images from uh, Jacques. And then came a time where Jacques decided to uh, uh, stop doing films at the film board. He's now 75 in good shape and is still very uh, close to the pin screen. But he decided to hand over the pin screen. He made uh, a, a workshop in, uh, at the film board. Uh, where different filmmakers, Theodore Ushev, uh, Regina Pessoa, Claude Ruizier, we were eight uh, all together, the same number of people as the time where um, uh, Alexeya presented the, the, the pin screen in, uh, uh, in 73. And I was lucky enough to be part of those uh, filmmakers uh, invited, and uh, I presented a project. I was fascinated right away by the instrument, like the first five minutes, I knew, okay, this is my life. And I made the first little test because uh, it's good to say it's your life, but are you able to do it? So this is the first test I made, and I, I, there was so much, uh, uh, it was so intriguing that uh, I was really happy that they let me do uh, present this. <laughs> so the technique and the tools. Uh, uh, there's something very uh, important uh, with the pin screen. Uh, it's the, um, it's the, the, the way of working, the procedé travail, the, the, the working process uh, that is uh, very close to the um, creation. Um, first, the, uh, the dotted surface. Uh, we have the chance, and now I'm going to say it in front of <laughs> Jean-Baptiste, we have the best pin screen. <laughs> Because, because the surface is really very, very soft. We had to work a lot on the surface of the last pin screen, which is improving. But a pin screen is like a music instrument. It has to live. Uh, our pin screen was in life all those 45 years. And the damage is had, it's just, uh, it got older. It has some cicatrices, uh, some scars but not very much, it suffered much less from the time than the other suffered not being used. And so this is the, the, why we have such a nice surface. Now about the surface, um, you spend a lot of time in front of the pin screen when you work, you have a lot of time to think, and uh, we know this story uh, of uh, Alexeyev, who is said that the wrote about them, that he was very, the idea of a pin screen came to him looking at this uh, engraving from Goya. Goya has a very particular way to do this cross hatching and hatching uh, that are parallel and oblique. And that's very particular to, um, to Goya. And it is said uh, that uh, he had this idea while looking at Goya's engraving that it looked like shadows and that maybe Creating shadows would make him be able to do uh, shades of gray. And that's how he made his, this first uh, uh, baby Nicolas, this first uh, uh, pin screen. Uh, and again, uh, the shadow, the interesting thing is that uh, when you have a surface that you lighten, uh, the, 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 the direction of the shadow are not the same when you have 240,000 pins. So this is a picture I made. If you look at the right, upper right side and the down left side, you see that the shades are, are different. In the upper right side, you're into a Goya. It's a parallel and oblique lines. And this means that when I draw on that part of the pin screen, I can't do any straight edges. It's all very soft because, because of the shadow. Whereas, and this looks a lot as the, uh, like the shadows that uh, Goya was doing. And when you are on the down left side, then it's, uh, it's um, uh, the, 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 the act cross hatching are much smaller, it's like little dots, and you're into a Seurat. And actually, Seurat and Goya were favorite uh, uh, painters. Now, this is my theory, <laughs> that he loved those uh, artists, and he achieved to include them into the pin screen. And when I work, and uh, you know, when you're alone, you think of hundred things. And when I work very often, I go, oh God, I'm going into the Goya. Very so it's interesting. It's like it's included into uh, the pin screen. I was trying to understand this phenomena. So, whoops, sorry, I, I, I lost the image. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, but 
then it got too complicated. <laughs> um, the tools, uh, those are the tools that uh, Alexei and Claire uh, left to the film board, and we still have them. They are a bit older, but they were very well done, so they still uh, do their, their job. So I'm doing uh, all the drawings and the, the, the different patterns with the, those tools, but of course it's like buying brushes and, and, and pencils. Uh, I use many other tools and I have collected many. I work a lot with glass, with bulbs. Um, so I, I order my tools in, in, in baskets. So this is a line basket, this is a stripe basket, this is a pattern basket, this is the uh, uh, spheres basket. Uh, you have to understand that if you want to do a form, you have to have the form. If you don't have it, you have to fabricate it because uh, uh, you cannot really draw, uh, you are doing also uh, always surfaces. So uh, then I keep collecting, like this drawing for example is made with those four things uh, you see it for, the, the salt and the, the this for example, uh, all the patterns I did with the, the instrument that you see here. So it's very much attached to the instruments you have, and that's why when you work on the pin screen, you, you don't do what you want. You do what the pin screen wants you to do when you have an idea. That, you know, uh, someone was uh, saying at, uh, at a conference, uh, uh, well, in, uh, in uh, live action, it's very hard because we have to deal with actors, and in animation, you're lucky you don't have actors, you're free. No, I have an actress. It's, 60 kilos heavy, and he's in front of me, like there all the time. And so with my stripe box uh, here, I, uh, that's how I made this uh, animation here. Um, so now, uh, to the creative uh, process, to prepare myself, I spend a lot of time exploring my subject before I start. Uh, I need to know uh, what I want to talk about because I know I want to be able to. Uh, I, I don't. You don't make a, um, a, a storyboard because then you, you cannot follow it. So I study my subject. I know what I want to talk about. When I start the film, I know where I want to go, but I don't know how I would get there. It's the game. It's the way to play the game. It's a very fun game. It's scary. Very scary. But uh, having uh, done a lot of uh, sketching allows me to, uh, to, to be already in the world uh, that I'm trying to, uh, to reach, so that when I start the animation, uh, I, I already have ideas, and other ideas come because uh, of the, um, the, the, the spirit that I am in, in, into already. But everything happens here and now. It's really uh, um, uh, straight ahead animation, and you, the creative process is all along the, uh, the process of, uh, of working. So those are sketches. For example, where it comes, uh, uh, the, there's, for those of you who've seen the film yesterday, there's a little pump that uh, pumps everything away, a uh, void pump. Uh, and it came from a drawing of uh, Goya that I like a lot, and then I started to play with it, and then it became this little thing that is uh, uh, symbolizing the, the void that uh, gets into uh, So sketches and sketches and sketches and sketches. Oops. Until, uh, uh, and often I put all the sketches together to have the, a, a Put, uh, to, to order the different ideas, and when I have a pile of books and I'm ready to start, and uh, most of the time I don't look inside anymore, they're there, or sometimes when I'm, I'm into panic, then <laughs> I, I search inside them, but the ideas become more animating. Very often I just start drawing something. I have, uh, as I tell you, I have the structure, I know where I want to go, but while animating things happen, and that's that's the fun thing, because it happens and you, so you animate the idea's life. And so very often I'm at uh, the film board and I'm at the cafeteria and then we tell each other, oh, what are you doing? And then I, I, I really invent every day uh, when it's going to uh, happen. And very often in the subway, on the way to the home, I say, oh, thank you, how is this going to continue? And then uh, I just come, so it's, uh, it's a very, uh, very much of my creative process. And that's what Alexei was saying, that uh, uh, it catches the moment of dream because it's, uh, it's uh, 
your working really uh, right away with, uh, with your imagination. Um, and before we get uh, into this, uh, this part, uh, there is, uh, Alexei was saying, uh, the most important property of the thin screen is the absence of any material reference point. It may be that these constraints develop a certain capacity which is to be able to stop at any time the beautiful moment of the dream. And this is uh, uh, something I feel very strongly, that I'm in the dark, and uh, I, I, I also always have the feeling that I'm looking into the thin screen, I'm looking for the ideas that appear when I just do light and shadow, and at one point, the image appears. And so that's why it's very profound and intuitive, and since there's no turn back, when I do my capture and I'm do the, doing the next picture, if I made a mistake, there's no turn back, there's no correction, even digital doesn't correct well. So uh, you need a lot of concentration, but with this concentration, you get really deep into yourself. Um, I was uh, lucky that the time I came was the time where we uh, got into uh, the digital uh, time, so the, the passing over into digital. There's one thing that changed a great deal is uh, the capture software and the live view. I had a live view. Alexei and Jacques Bourne, they never had a live view. They never knew what they were doing. They had to wait one, two, three months before they see what they've done. This is major, really major, and I appreciate it every day. Um, I can do, uh, uh, whoops, sorry, I'm backwards. I can do the editing uh, uh, every day, like if I did a, a piece of animation, I can put it in my timeline and, uh, and, uh, and vision it. Uh, I've tried many things. We've done a lot of research associating with new technology, uh, things that I'm not going to use, but just for fun, stereoscopy, uh, what does it look like? I'm going to work in, in the next film. I'm working a lot with macro photography because it's so nice to be so close to the pin screen. Uh, working with the slider to uh, make some camera movements uh, like here. I, don't, I can't show you the film because uh, it's not uh, ready yet, but uh, uh, to get very close uh, uh, to in, 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 into one shot or doing other kind of camera movements, sometimes with the slider, but sometimes also by hand, uh, depending. So there's a lot to, uh, uh, to explore, and uh, the, the pin screen is not there. There is still a lot, a lot to, uh, uh, to do with the, um, uh, with the new technology associated with it. I'm working a lot also with the light effect, uh, changing the directions of light, multiple light, colored uh, light. I work a lot with uh, flashlights, uh, doing long exposure and uh, moving the flashlight over so uh, that I point into some part of the uh, of the drawing and, uh, and 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 we can create some color effect with the light. So this is from the film I'm doing now that deals with. Uh, uh, the Infanta Mariana, who was painted by Velázquez. So, and now just a bit from the, the film now, the one I'm working on.
Michelle, may I ask you something? Uh, as I have this right here, that the paperboard itself has a quirk in it that the top right gives the oblique lines all on its own. Yep. And the bottom right is back. If I light it from the left side. If, you light it if I light it from the right side, then it's the opposite. But the shadows, there are 214,000 pins and there are 214,000 different shadows. Sure, sure. It has a mind of its own. <laughs> Thank you. On the, uh, on the woman who's closing her eyes, um, that's just all animation. We're not doing any cross dissolves or anything, right? Uh, I, there is a cross dissolve uh, between the, the each frame. No, uh, yes, yes, there's a cross dissolve. Yeah, yes. Uh, the, what I showed you is not edited yet, and it's not the right music yet, and it's not the good resolution. It's working work in the progress than what I'm really doing right now, like tomorrow, uh, actually, yeah, two days when I come back, and two days ago. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, the pin screen has mentioned uh, panel replacements, thanks to the, the Canadian filmmaker, but as you already know, it's not so easy to find someone to take care of the pin screen. Uh, so Canadians were lucky with the first Jacques Duan and then Michel. Uh, and in 2010, in fact, uh, uh, Alexei's daughter, Svetlana, uh, was in the center of, uh, of the photo, uh, was quite old, over, over 85 years old, and she, she decided to sell uh, the latest pin screen done by Alexei and Claire Parker uh, in 1977. Uh, they've done one single film uh, on this pin screen called uh, Trois Thèmes, Three Thèmes, uh, and in the same um, principle, you know, the same, uh, same deal as uh, the, the, the other one, uh, pictures at an exhibition with two pin screens all work, well working together. And um, so, they, they, they rebuilt the, this, um, this pin screen, and in fact, in, in 2012, uh, CNC uh, buy to uh, Svetlana uh, the, the, the latest pin screen uh, because uh, it was very, very, very important for us to get it, not to have another pin screen uh, to um, show in a, an exhibition. It was useless because we have many, many, many others. But it was uh, just at one condition. And uh, when we spoke at the direction, at the head of CNC with Sophie, as I said, OK, uh, we can imagine that, but at one condition. The pin screen that you want to buy uh, must be functional. That's a condition. And if CNC buys this pin, this pin screen, it's to uh, make it available to the French artist because this invention has been done imagined and created in France in the 30s. So it would be good if uh, France has uh, a pin screen back, in a way. So um, we make a deal with uh, Svetlana uh, in uh, 2012. So here in the picture, you have uh, the head of uh, Film Heritage at CNC, uh, Laurent Cormier, Michel Lemieux, Svetlana the head of the collection of uh, uh, CNC, um, Beatrice de Bast, and myself. Uh, so we were quite happy uh, this day. And so this is uh, the spinet. So this is the latest spin screen. It's uh, the twin of the neck uh, sold to the National Film Board of, uh, in, in the 72. It's uh, exactly the same principle, you know, the same um, concept. You have tubes and pins. Um, is in a, not in bad condition, but it haven't been used uh, between 1980 and uh, 2012, and it was uh, uh, kept uh, under the protection of uh, Svetlana and some people in Paris. But it was in fact in a kind of a garage, you know. So it was in good condition. Jacques. Uh, made a restoration in 2008, and I think that 
in fact, he saved the pink screen because it was in bad condition, so he, he, he put new tubes and new pins in, inside it uh, to replace uh, some parts and uh, just to maintain it in a quite not so bad condition. And then in 2012, uh, he arrived at CNC in Guadalcy, and uh, so we decided with, uh, with Michel to, to, to ask her, in fact, uh, to help us to uh, restore it. So she came twice in 2013 and 2014, I think, more or less, you know, for two, two sessions, two, two one week session at each time. And in fact, uh, she teaches us how to take care of it. So we clean the pin screen, we learned about uh, all the different parts of the pin screen, how to change tubes, pins, uh, check the pressure uh, on the, all the tubes, because it, all the tubes are maintained only by pressure uh, in, the, in the square. You know, you have you know, you have here an iron square, and uh, so it's only by pressure that uh, everything works. So uh, we have been trained by, by Michel, and uh, so now we are the most uh, curator of the pin screen. It's a, just a little surface, you know, that we take care of it. So uh, we are no, no uh, we don't know how to draw this pin screen, you know, so we, we are um, not quite a lot of ambition to make a film someday, you know, it's, it's not all art, uh, but we love to take care of it. So, so and uh, after the second time, I think, uh, the second session, Michel um, uh, used to test it before the, 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 before the, the deal with Vetana, of course, but um, uh, after to have cleaned it, uh, she decided to make a, a picture. So this is a, the first picture made on the green screen uh, almost 40 years after Alexei and Karma Karden. So it was uh, quite an emotional for, for us. And then uh, we decided uh, to organize also a workshop uh, a few years after. So in 2015, in the same time as the uh, ANSI uh, main exhibition about Claire Parker and Alexander Alexander's exhibition, we, a few months before, we uh, uh, make a call and uh, to, to get some people, uh, uh, some artists, and uh, Michel, uh, Sophie, um, and uh, also people at CNC and I, we have selected uh, eight people. So, um, we had um, uh, Florence Miai, who was a, was a great artist on uh, um, painting uh, animation. Pierre Luc Grandjean, uh, Nicolas Ligori, Florentine Grenier. You have seen uh, a film from Florentine in uh, erotic shorts this year called Pixel Joy. Uh, you have Clémence Boucherot, with Michel, uh, Cerise Lopez, and Céline Deveau. Céline Deveau has a uh, César for. Uh, a film called uh, Sunday Brunch or something like that in, in English, <laughs> Le Repas Dominical, um, and uh, Florentine, uh, no, not Florentine, Justine Brustiger. So, um, you know, uh, quite a lot of people, a lot of generation of people, and it was open to everyone, in fact. Uh, the only condition that uh, people who doesn't care about if they were French or not, it's not the problem. The, the condition was uh, at least one film, even a great Asian film. Uh, and um, the main thing is that uh, the people need to live in France uh, for a long time, or you know, for because uh, if uh, they decide to make a film, uh, the pin screen must be in France. We can move it for, from everywhere. You know, we, we just I'll just go back quickly, but we imagine uh, we design um, Sophie and I with the help of, of uh, Jack and Michelle uh, a table, you know, and a protection glass, etc., etc. Everything here must be uh, moved, you know, through fly case and put it in a studio somewhere in France. But uh, it's, we can't uh, send the pin screen outside France for many reasons. 
uh, especially if there is a problem with it, uh, we, we can have to, to go there quickly. So, so I go back. And uh, so uh, we start uh, for this, um, this training for three days uh, in a hard school in Annecy. And uh, also, um, um, Alexandre uh, Noyer came to, to, to with us for this, uh, for, for this training, not on the main screen, but he is in Nancy, so he lives in Nancy, so it was stupid to, to, to tell him not, not, not come with us. So uh, he's seen all the process. And uh, so it was, uh, it was definitely great. And I'll show you now just a quick video. Maybe you have something to Wait. say about the workshop. So, of course, everything has been done with a computer, with a camera, with a live view. And this is a cadavre, excessive cadavre? Cadavre ski in France. And so, you have impacted eight people on the workshop. It's very, very short because it's just to walk uh, two hours each on the pin screen. So after this uh, workshop, we, we just imagine to take to select uh, eight people, uh, and uh, we we do expect at least maybe to have one or two. You know, it's a bit like the war. Well, when you have soldier and you have to fight against an enemy, you know, you say to everyone, "Hey, go!" and you say, "You, you, you won't see them anymore," you know, because they, they're going to, to, to be killed. Uh, you maybe one, maybe one or two who will come back, and um, um, it's sad. But you know, when you make a workshop like this, and uh, as Canadian experience, you know, many many people are, have been invited. They're quite talented people have been invited as a national people to try to, to, to make some films or some stuff on, on the pin screen. And many, many people like Theodore Chef or, or Claude Cloutier uh, said, oh, it's great, but, you know, it's definitely you know, not for me, you know, so I give up. And uh, Theodore Chef, and he's a very important filmmaker. Actually, he loved it, but he said, I can't, I can't work on it, I'll destroy it. <laughs> he, he, he said, I have to renounce, I love it, but uh, <laughs> I'm not good for uh, curating the instrument. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, um, we have selected these eight people, and at the end of the workshop, everyone said, we want to go on with it. We love it, we love it, we love it. So we, we had a huge problem, you know, because we were expecting maybe one or two, maybe three, but not eight. So we were, in fact, really, really, really happy. And they all asked to uh, have more time on this screen screen. So we decided, uh, with Laurent Cormier and uh, the people from CNC and Beatrice the Past, to organize, to, to, to make them uh, available to be in screen in Guadalajara at CNC uh, for one month, each of them. Uh, and so they came. Uh, one, uh, one at a time for uh, a full one month or, or two weeks and two weeks and whatever. And uh, to, to, to practice uh, on their own on the big screen and, and to try some ideas. And uh, of course, uh, uh, they, they made some great stuff. And so here you have Florence, you have Soris, and uh, now it's um, the test from uh, Pierre-Luc Grandjean, and in fact, it's almost a film.
just in Bersteka, uh, it began to think of uh, the film Embrace Etrat that you saw yesterday, the seeds uh, began during this residency. First image is the project. And we may have another project during this year or next year. Uh, that's uh, an image uh, from Nicolas Ligori. Uh, so he also went to the Cinematheque and had a project of a film. So you can see that uh, a lot of work uh, may be done in France uh, for the next few, uh, few years. And I uh, don't know what's next. Ah, yes. <laughs> So it's from uh, Justine Fritzsteker. Uh, I think when you uh, meet the paint screen, you have, it's a, it's a great uh, moment, and when you touch the screen, you can't get your finger back away from the screen. So thank you very much. Maybe you have a few questions? observation that, um, I mean, I'm, I've been a professional archivist my entire life and worked in the Museum of Modern Art Film Department, as some of you know. Um, one thing I think that both of you that went on said is that I can barely think of any film archive that is in the role of promoting film production. And it seems to me that the fact that you took this object into the archive and are supporting filmmakers creatively making works is, as far as I know, in the, in the film archiving world around, you know, in all over the globe, is quite unusual. Um, and I think you're to be commended for that. I mean, we know of the National Film Board, which has all sorts of, you know, important cultural institution to make these works, but also to continue this tradition in an archival context seems to me quite unusual. I mean, archiving, clip licensing, they do programming, they sometimes do distribution, they do conservation, they do preservation, but to me this seems like a rather unique um, accomplishment, so you're to be commended. Thank you, but you, you know, it's 
a, it's a, just a, we, we spoke about, about this with uh, our direction, you know, with the head of the CNC, and um, this is one point, one good point why CNC decide also to, to, to find some money, to put money on some of these things, for example, this is heritage, and female heritage, and we preserve, we have preserved uh, all the female, so the work is still on, in, in process for some of them. But, uh, and we have many archives from Alex AF, you know, all the personal papers, uh, professional papers, photos, films, etc., etc., in screens. And for this one, it's uh, just a um, female heritage, in the main concept, meets production. And it's, it's a little bit the, the synthesis and the idea of CNC you know, in general, because usually when, when you, you speak about CNC, uh, you, you, you don't think straight to the film preservation, but first to the production, you know, and help to the production and distribution. And that's why it was interesting for us to, to do it. So because it's, uh, you know, so when film production meets film heritage, and uh, we are here in this point, and this is a green screen, all this project. But thank you. <laughs> One thing I noticed in when I saw at night on Ball Hampton yesterday, uh, there were a lot of superimpositions, the different images atop others, and I'm wondering, uh, was that done in camera or was it used some sort of version of an optical printer to overlay all these images? And if it was like an optical printer, how did they avoid degradation when they photographed and re-photographed <laughs> earlier images? This is for the, uh, especially for, for the night on the Bull Mountain, as far as we know, it was in, in, uh, during the shooting. So they, they, they just put the image back on the camera during the shooting, mm -hmm. and then they, 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 they shoot again. Yes. Yes. For uh, pictures at an exhibition that we have in the archive on, a, uh, on the film, that uh, uh, Alex EDF uh, used two pin screens, okay, but he screened also on the pin screen some shooting with a projector. And it was image by uh, image. And we have this, we have this film. It's uh, quite short, so it's a little dancer, you know, where well, one's a little turn and turn and turn. Uh, it had been done with uh, some of a uh, model sheet, you know, in, a, in plastic or stuff like this, or hard paper. And shoot on camera and then develop, rebuild, you know, and after screen with uh, another projector on image per image, on the pin screen, with a new image. So it make kind of a, um, you know, as a, as a true car, you know, um, as the is done, you know, and maybe they done it in life, you know. So it was, a, everything has been done mainly in their workshop in Paris. And so that's why they, they spend months and months, and they have not, not a lot of money to do that. So it, you know, it's a, it's a mess. It's a, it's a, well, when you see the tools and the cameras used, you know, they, they shoot all the film with a pate 1908. You know, it's a, it was perfectly, it's not a problem, it, but, but you, we still have the cameras. And, uh, and uh, when we discover that, we see, we see a few, we don't believe it. So, oh, they could make a film like this, you know, with a Totally. I mean, it must have been excruciating if you, if you make one mistake on any of these levels, the it's entire dead. shine. Yeah, wow, that is astonishing. Yeah, hi. I was surprised to see that I like to have the park with the Mount Vernon and check this be my hometown. They, they had a studio there and they were filming and shooting in, in Mount Vernon. Not in Montreal, Just in the house, a workshop in the house. But did they film there too? Yes, uh, en passant was, was done there. And also, uh, uh, not advertising, not, but for uh, war office of uh, information during the war. Just a few, a few films. I have a similar question to the previous one. So that McLaren film, the canoe moving point of view going into the, uh, the landscape, 
Is that often thinking as well? Is that we think that like a multiplane effect is, is coming uh, towards the camera? It was not made out in this but yesterday. What, the, the what Tom McLaren, yeah. It was not made out in this strange now, but it was a, it was a, a, a program made uh, with uh, uh, several films, and <coughs> just one in the pin screen. <coughs> Um, I was fascinated by what Michelle said about the influence of uh, Goya and Seurat. And uh, my other question was um, when, uh, Sophie, I think you mentioned that uh, Alexiev came to Paris in 1921, and I think you referred briefly to the avant-garde, which of course was a great period of avant-garde uh, uh, um, uh, activity in France. So my question is, in papers or documents or records, do any of you know what artists or filmmakers from the avant-garde, and let's say the French avant-garde, may have influenced him? Because, you know, of course, there's the Surrealists, and, you know, he was around, or the Dadaists, or uh, Leger. I mean, is there anything that he's written that you know of? He, he didn't want to uh, be influenced. <laughs> so, no, no school or anything like that. Uh, we know he uh, settled, he had a, uh, Made some theater setups from for uh, in Trojanski's uh, uh, pieces. Uh, what else? Pitouf also. Pitouf, George Pitouf was a friend, a friend, uh, friend of, uh, of uh, uh, him and uh, his wife. Um, but he <coughs> he didn't want to follow the mainstream. Right. But he was friends. should go through the 
world with that one eye open and one eye closed, one to see the world and one to see inside yourself. And I think uh, uh, the filmmakers that deal with the film screen must have uh, this relation in, uh, into this uh, deeper eye because um, it's, uh, it's not an instrument where you can uh, uh, develop a project having a storyboard and uh, uh, then uh, producing what you have planned in the storyboard. It's this way of doing a film, which is the main way of uh, doing films, can turn to a nightmare when you are on the film screen because of the tools, because you never know what you're going to be able to do. So it's really, it's, it's into the genetic of this film screen that you have to be able to deal with that, to uh, just invent on the spot and uh, day by day, hour by hour, uh, go, uh, yeah, uh, do this animation and, uh, and be able to deal with accidents and, uh, and hazard. Um, it is, at some point, uh, it's very playful, but it's also very scary because uh, you don't have any other thin screen to practice on. You have to, you have to have just one. So if you're stuck into a problem, there's nothing else to do. You can't practice elsewhere. You can't say, okay, I'll do another scene. You have to, there's just one thin screen and that, that one, and the problem is there and you have to solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think in the personality of the person, you have to find that situation very fun. Because if it's stressing you, then <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> and probably that's, uh, uh, because it's interesting, uh, through those uh, 46 years, many people have visited the, uh, uh, the film board and uh, looked at the film screen. Very often we have had visitors coming and saying, okay, this is a very interesting, important filmmaker. Let's have him touch the film screen and see what uh, he or she would uh, uh, feel about it. And uh, for example, Jan Minitka, who is a very uh, important graphic uh, artist and, and filmmaker, uh, Jacques received him and he thought he said he would love it. He touched it, he said, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he said, ah, this is too hard to do. So it's, uh, it's it, there is something, and uh, your question is good because I'm, I'm looking for, okay, what is the main uh, track uh, that uh, will put us in a, in a line, but uh, I think besides the jokes of the length of your arm, it's uh, the, this um, capacity to, to deal with this uh, uh, involving of your inner world and uh, 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 dangerous path to get somewhere not, not knowing and having no option for correction. Because even in the digital uh, world where we think we can correct everything, Corrections, they're not possible on the thin screen because every <coughs> thin deals a different uh, shadow. So if I do uh, something wrong in the spot and I see it afterwards, I, I can't patch it with something else. It shows. It, everything shows on it. So it's uh, a no turn back process, and that's probably the main uh, character uh, we have. You have to find it very fun. <laughs> Uh, in, your book, in your movie, music uh, seems to be very important, classical music. Uh, I was wondering your connection to music, how you select music, and was it important to Alexeyev too, the, the music that goes with the... Uh, to Alexeyev, the music was very important. Uh, uh, yesterday, um, uh, Alexander Rocker, his grandson, was saying, uh, basically, he was illustrating his memories through music. Um, for myself, Last time, the, the, the music you heard is not the music that I'm going to use because I have had some other music. I wanted to work with music because of the rhythm, and I was working with pieces of Shostakovich that I really enjoy a lot, short temporary pieces. But then I, it, I, I realized that this, uh, the music gave me a structure, a rhythm, and at one point I had to take it away because uh, it didn't fit anymore. Uh, it was uh, dictating me some length that I couldn't use anymore. So the music was not fitting anymore with it. So I took it away and I worked in silence for quite an amount of time. And 
what you heard is um, uh, from the sound designer uh, that I asked him, can you destabilize me, please? <laughs> and give me some other rhythm so that I can re-look at the picture. The, the music is, uh, 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 gives such an effect in, on your memory, more than, uh, than pictures. And uh, it's very, very hard when you work with the music to take it away and put something else. So this is a, a, a process of uh, uh, finding the, the, the music I will use, but we will have something composed for Like these? Uh, you're talking about. I mean, what you? Like what camera do you uh, film? Uh, well, the first one was made uh, made on an iPhone, and this one is on a Canon. It's a digital camera, okay. actually, a normal digital, good digital camera. Yeah, just a hypothetical question, right? If an engine, a computer engineer was able to design a pin switch that had memory of where each pin was at any given click of the time. And, and to solve the problem, if you made a mistake, you can never go back. But the computer can actually generate the exact spot where all the things were. Would you embrace that or reject that? Then the game would be boring. <laughs> 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 <laughs>